Okay, so working on the 2009 Toyota 2AZ-FE motor. This came out of a Pontiac Vibe. Um, if this was in the vehicle, uh, still, you would be taking your feeler gauge and going through with various sizes and figuring out which ones will slide underneath the cam load with it in the up position uh, to get their correct sizing. Uh, I've already done this in the vehicle. There's a lot of videos about it, so I just want to show the tips on this particular one. Uh, this style has the buckets, valve lifter buckets, with the number stamped on the inside to indicate what size they should be. Now just because it says it's a number 33 doesn't in fact mean that that's the, the size that it still is currently. You want to get an actual reading on your valve buckets so that you know what it is that you have to adjust. So this is the number 32 and the diagram from Toyota so that number 32 should be 0 0.2094 inches the micrometer. So if we take our handy dandy micrometer from Harbor Freight, throw it in here, until it's just just snug. Let me read this here. So 0 0.2 One o two is what it's reading right now, and that's really close to what the manufacturer spec is, but it's not the same. So you can't just go by the number 32 is, in fact, 0 0.2094. That's why these measurements are important to figure out which size uh, valve lifter buckets you need to reorder to put in the right place. So somebody created this document online and it was for a shim style but I just used it for the buckets. So at the top are the variances uh, that you're allowed to have the allowances for it to be in spec or not. So 0 0.012 is above the variance. All the rest of them 0 0.08, 0 0.10 are fine. So those are the ones we need to take a look at and figure out what bucket size we needed. So this side would be the lifter number that was currently in place just for my reference so that they're in the same sequence on the table. Then you go through and use your micrometer and measure all of them so you have the actual size that they are and you figure out from there uh, which ones you need to replace and with what number they need to be replaced with. So Toyota has this handy flow chart and get real close here on it. Used installed lifter thickness versus measured clearance. So measured clearance being our feeler gauge number. Example 0 0.012 versus used installed uh, thickness measurement. In this case would be 0.2100. So on the flow chart, we would go down to the closest, which is 0 0.2102, and get a piece of paper to go across. Then you would look at the very top section to try to find your 0 0.012 variance, which fits right in between these guys, and follow that down. And it tells you you need bucket number 40 to come back within spec. Bucket 40 says that it should be 0.2126 in size and the brand new one that I received measured out at 0.2133 which is pretty close uh, keep you with, within at least general spec. Now note that there is an exhaust and an intake portion for this because they do have different size calculations for those. But also found it on the exhaust. If you look here, this section here, this section, if you land on it, indicates that no adjustment is needed. So when you do your flow chart left and right and up and down, now it says in here to 0 0.0118 to 0 0.0157 doesn't need adjustment. However, the manual indicates intake and exhaust that these are 
yield tolerable allowances, which this 0 0.0150 to 0 0.0189 falls into a different category when you get into the exhaust side. So you're going to need to take that into account when you do the exhaust one, is to move this over accordingly, because this one is no longer with thin spec, it would be this section. So once you've figured out which ones are out of spec and intolerant, you're going to know that you're going to need to replace those buckets for the required lifters to replace those with. So notate which size buckets you need based on the accurate number of the bucket and then the hardest part was just finding these things. So I found EB Toyota parts. That's a place you can look online. So the lifter size are the ones that I needed. And these are the new part numbers. Toyota discontinued the old part numbers and have new part numbers now. So ebtoyotaparts.com, I think is what it's called. Uh, you can give them a phone call. They're real cool to talk with. It took about a week and a half, almost two weeks, to get the parts to me because they had to order some in. And they're in about $15 a piece. So the new ones, I've separated by underlining them so I know that they were new. And then I'm also going ahead and checking the actual thickness of the new one in comparison to what they should be by default. So most of them are really close, so I think we'll be okay. Um, as far as the valve tick noise you heard, there was a video I did on VVT that had the tick noise in it. So when I get this put back together, uh, hopefully we'll have a good comparison of before and after. There is a lot of math you can do to make all this happen and work, make it work out. That flow chart just easily simplifies it, so you don't have to worry about doing as much math. Um, you know, you can break it down into things like this, but it gives you basically the exact same thing that the flow chart does. So, just in case you don't have this, but if you go to the, I think it's a 2AZ FE mechanical PDF, Google that, you can get the entire uh, breakdown of that motor for rebuild purposes.